I, I got to give you my credentials before I begin because I know, you know, we believe in credentials, and if you don't have the right credentials, people don't take you seriously. I was a D-minus student at Alamo Heights High School in San Antonio, Texas. I failed PE four years. <laughs> took Algebra one, failed it, took it over, passed it with a D-minus. Took Algebra two, failed it, took it over, passed it with a D-minus. My typing and shorthand teacher, Mrs. Reed, told me, and I swear this is the truth, she said, never disgrace my name by applying for a secretarial job. Well, when you were a redhead growing up in the 50s, it was awful. Because can you see the hair on my arms? You can't see it, can you? Can't see it on my eyebrows and eyelashes either. We didn't use a lot of Maybelline mascara, stuff like that back in the 50s. So what you had back then was this red face, ruddy complexion, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, and two blue holes. <laughs> and what that all boiled down to was that for 12 years, nobody loved me till my senior year, and he came from Indiana. Apparently all the girls in Indiana look like this. <laughs> and he wanted to go study, and I said yes, and it was great. And then after we graduated, he wanted to get married. I figured it was probably my last shot at it, so I said yes. <laughs> and we moved with the 52 Chevrolet, a U-Haul trailer, and $48 to Hereford, Texas. Six o'clock in the morning, we pull into our little apartment on Highway 25. Haven't you always wanted to live on a highway? <laughs> we fell across the bed exhausted. Two hours later, there's a knock at the door. It's my husband's boss telling him he's got two hours to get ready. They are sending him out of town for three to six weeks. That's the only soul I knew in Hereford, Texas. When his car pulled out of that driveway, I cried for three solid days. There's something therapeutic about crying for three solid days because you get sick of it. So I said, Suzanne, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to get myself a job. So I got in that 52 Chevrolet, went down Main Street, went in all the big stores like C.R. Anthony. I told people I was looking for work. Somebody threw me a trick question. She said, what do you do? I said, I'm a secretary. I went out and I met a man by the name of Mr. Leo Forrest. He's the general manager. He gave me an application and I filled it out. Then he called me into his office. He said, well, I see here you type. I said, yes, sir. He said, what speed? I said, 120 words a minute. <laughs> he said, do you take shorthand? I went, oh, yeah. He said, what speed? I said, same speed, 120 words a minute. He said, that's very interesting. What would you say if I had my secretary give you a pad and pencil and had you take a letter? You know, I taught shorthand for seven years. I said, I'd say goodbye. <laughs> he said, we don't use shorthand here. We use a dictating machine. Do you know how to operate a dictating machine? I asked him the question that stood me in good stead all my life. I said, what kind is it? He told me, I told him, I knew how to operate the other kind. <laughs> he said, well, you got the job. I said, I got the job? I got the job? He said, yes, yeah, stay today, meet everybody, look at the files, come back tomorrow morning, ready to go to work. And I loved working. I caught fire to working. I'd sign up for everything. That time, Mr. Forrest said, we need somebody to get the newsletter out to the subscribers on the line. I said, I can do that. He said, have you ever done a newsletter? I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, how hard is it to do a newsletter? All you got to go do is get a copy of the old form, sit there long enough, something will come to you. <laughs> so while my career was going great, my marriage, sad to say, was in trouble because he came home. You know the way you can look back in your life, all those disappointments you didn't think you could handle, find the good in it. All those times you didn't think you'd get over, find the good in it. The good from that rotten marriage in Hereford, Texas was that my whole philosophy about confidence was born. Because after that marriage, I concluded that confidence, real confidence, doesn't have so much to thinking you can do something as it comes from knowing you can get out of it. That's confidence. <laughs> Knowing you're not trapped. 
knowing there's always a window open. Because after all, it's not life that gets me. It's my reaction to it. It's not the problem that's the problem. It's my thinking about the problem. 